soil, the foundation of life. Not only the metaphorical building blocks of life, but the physical foundation on and from which our entire civilization is built. Our homes, schools, cities and towns, roadways and railways all lean directly on soil for support. But did you ever wonder where it all comes from? Or what will happen to it hundreds of years from now? Well, to understand that, we're going to have to dig a little deeper. For most of human history, building materials either grew in or came directly from soil itself. Once we developed tools and harnessed the power of fire, we moved out of caves and began building semi-permanent structures that returned readily to the soil after their use. As agriculture encouraged the formation of settlements, we began building more permanent dwellings made of earthen materials like rammed earth, cob, or adobe clay. Bricks were made by combining clay, sand, water, and organic binders like dried straw or grass, and leaving them in the sun to dry. And if there's not enough clay in the surface soil, a deep enough hole would usually reveal clay-rich subsoils. Earthen homes were durable, breathable, moisture resistant, fire resistant, earthquake, hurricane, and flood resistant, and could be made cheaply from local materials. But with the Industrial Revolution came a series of inventions that would completely change the face of building and construction. Steam and water-powered sawmills allowed wood to be cut into lumber and produced at scale. Factory-sized kilns produced bricks that were harder and more durable than the sunbaked variety. And the steam engine allowed for the production of iron beams, giving rise to taller, more complex structures. Careful consideration had to be taken as to how much weight a given soil could support, or its load-bearing capacity. If a soil is too sandy, it can liquefy when wet. Too much of certain types of clay, and the ground will swell and shrink as it wets and dries, causing cracks in the foundation that gave the Leaning Tower of Pisa its claim to fame. By 1824, with the advent of modern cement, urban areas began transforming into concrete jungles. And as we swapped soil for cement, construction quickly became one of the dirtiest industries on the planet. Today, concrete is used two times more than steel, wood, plastic, and aluminum combined, contributing to 24% of greenhouse gas emissions, creating massive amounts of dust and debris, and sealing off the soil, preventing water from infiltrating and cutting off the oxygen supply to life underground. In the 1950s, there was a resurgence of interest in earthen materials as an environmentally friendly, locally sourced alternative that required just 1% the energy of concrete to produce while imbuing a sense of place into our architectural structures. But such diverse and variable materials don't lend themselves so well to standardized building codes and regulations. Seeking a best of both worlds alternative, the green building movement gave rise to LEED certification, the Forest Stewardship Council, and a growing attention to the integration of green spaces into our urban environments. Scientists and engineers are even developing low footprint biocomposites like hempcrete and teeming with microbes to create concrete that can self-repair just by adding water. Still, with more and more people moving into urban areas and an area of soil the size of New York sealed up every 30 days, there's much to be done to reduce the footprint of construction and create a healthier, more habitable built environment. We need your help to lay the foundation for a more sustainable future. Click the link below to get involved.